Human body has various tissues and among them the connective tissue helps them to hold everything together our muscles bones organs they help to support they store and they connect but have you ever wondered do plants also have something similar and if plants do have a kind of connective tissue where is it and what exactly does it do can we make a connection between how connective tissues function in plants and animals well it turns out they do have one and we actually can make some sort of connection with that of the human connective tissue these are called as the ground tissue in plants let's dive into the plants version of the connective tissue which is the ground tissue systems let's start with how plant tissue systems are uh, categorized we have the undifferentiated tissue you might know them as meristematic tissue so these are usually stem cells when a plant develops meristematic tissue gives rise to distinct layers we have protoderm prokaryotic and ground meristem these layers mature to form specific tissue systems these tissue systems constitute the differentiated or the permanent tissue we find in plants so protoderm gives rise to epidermal um, tissue system which is mainly for protection prokaryotic gives rise to vascular tissue systems which is for transport and ground meristems give rise to ground tissue which forms the body of the plant in this video we will be focusing on the ground tissue systems ground tissue system is basically all tissue in a plant except the epidermis the outer layer and the vascular bundles which are for transport so you might know them as xylem and phloem this ground tissue makes up most of the plant body and the cells of the ground tissue play various roles they are known for storing substances in them uh, they can perform photosynthesis because they have chlorophyll they mainly provide structural support and they also can act as filler tissues ground tissue systems have three cells within them parenchyma cells which resemble the loose connective tissue within the human body these cells are also flexible and responsible for repair functions colenchyma cells are like cartilage they are flexible but they support the growing parts and sclerenchyma cells are like bones they are rigid and they also provide structural support let's start with parenchyma cells parenchyma cells make up 90% of the tissue of herbaceous plants they are also part of all plant systems they have very thin walls and these cells are loosely packed so therefore they contain intercellular spaces and you can notice that there is a large empty space sort of structure in the middle and these are their extremely large central vacuoles parenchyma cells are the primary component of filler tissue within a plant body This is the cross section of a monocot and a dicot root. Within this cross section, parenchyma cells are present in the cortex. So, these areas, okay, they are found in the pericycle. So, pericycle is this blue layer here as well. Uh, they are found in the uh, pith, which is the central portion. here as well you also have them in structures called as medullary rays which is part of the dicot stem so depending upon their function parenchyma cells are of various types primarily they are known for their storage so we have storage parenchyma they can store various substances like starch oil proteins you just name it so they usually store starch in their plastids um, and they store sugar and proteins in their vacuoles if the parenchyma cells have chloroplast they are called as chlorenchyma and their primary function is photosynthesis they are found in all green parts of the plant primarily they are found in leaves if the parenchyma cells have a uh, large intercellular spaces within them for circulation of gases they are called aerenchyma they are found in the roots of aquatic plants and they help the plants to float on water a specialized type of parenchyma tissue is the aquiferous parenchyma which is used for water storage they are particularly seen in desert plants we can see that they are almost transparent because their vacuole is holding a lot of water the cells of the chlorenchyma are found in leaves as two specific cells so we have the palisade cells which are elongated and they are compactly arranged together we have the spongy cells which are spaciously arranged and irregularly shaped 
together they form the mesophyll cells in a leaf parenchyma cells are also the main cell type responsible for tissue repair in plants the way they are able to do this is because they have the ability to uh, go back to their stem cell state and restart their meristematic activity so they actively divide and they replace the damaged or the injured cells what you are seeing is a bunch of undifferentiated plant tissue called a scallus usually used in plant tissue culture parenchyma cells are important components of these scalluses because of their ability to restart their meristematic activity next we have colenchyma cells the first thing you notice is that they are elongated cells similar to your parenchyma cells colenchyma cells can also restart their meristematic activity but their main function is to provide uh, resistance to the plants against mechanical stresses colenchyma is not a white spread tissue in the body of a plant uh, they are modified parenchyma unlike parenchyma cells they have very thick cell wall due to the deposition of pectin hemicellulose and cellulose these depositions are uneven the term colenchyma has a root word colla meaning glue it indicates the ability of these cells to bring together the surrounding tissues primarily they are the supporting tissues in dicot plants only monocot plants do not have colenchyma cells they are found in numerous herbaceous and woody plants and they are usually seen in stem leaves and the floral parts colenchyma cells can give different properties to different parts of the plant sometimes we see tensile strength so tensile strength is the ability of a structure to deform when a certain force is applied and if the force goes beyond a certain level the structure just breaks we would have noticed these uh, stringy structures on vegetables like leek and drumstick so in a drumstick if you would see they appear as these long lines so we can imagine them like a bunch of ropes that are holding all the tissues um, together and you can see that the drumstick has a certain strength if you try to break it because it doesn't break easily and finally when you give them a higher force and it breaks you see these structures forming sometimes uh, they give elasticity so elasticity elasticity is the ability to deform when a force is given but then once the force is removed you come back to the original form and shape um so this is usually seen in the petiole and soft stems of plants against wind so they ruffle in the wind but then they come back when the wind stops they also prevent breaking of the stem against wind and other environmental factors so you would see that they bend against the wind but they do not break all these properties are due to the colenchyma cells colenchyma cells give mechanical strength to the plant only when the cells are in a turgid state meaning there is an inflow of water into the cells and the cells are swollen the types of colenchyma cells are characterized by the differences in how their cell walls are thickened they are broadly classified as either having intercellular spaces or not having any intercellular spaces if the cells have a cell thickening but there are no intercellular spaces we can call them as angular colenchyma if the thickening is seen only on the vertices so these are the cells right and this is actually the vertex the point where all the cells meet and the thickening is seen here in such a case these are angular colenchyma cells and when the thickenings in the cell walls are in a parallel fashion along just one wall they are called as lamellar although it appears as all sides are thickened we can see that along this side the thickening is much broader than along this side if there are intercellular spaces between the cells if the cell wall thickening is uniform in all regions of the cell wall then we have an annular colenchyma cell so all sides are equally thickened here and finally if the cell wall thickening is around the intercellular spaces itself we call them as lacunar colenchyma cells so these are the intercellular spaces and we have thickenings around them finally we arrive at the third cell type which is sclerenchyma cells these cells provide mechanical support to the mature plant organs they sound similar to colenchyma cells right but these cells are dead cells how did they end up dying so it turns out they were not dead to begin with 
So these were living cells which then died because of secondary wall development due to lignin accumulation. I know it sounds like a lot of complicated words, so let me explain. So we have a cell here with its primary cell wall, its first cell wall. Now, when a plant cell matures, what happens is that it undergoes a second round of growth of sorts. So it accumulates lignin into the primary wall and it forms a secondary wall. Now, lignin does not allow water to pass through it. So what happens is that the cytoplasm of the cell gets locked inside. You can see here and gradually the protoplasm disintegrates and the cell dies. These cells develop these channels across these lignin called as pits. So although these cells are dead, they are surrounded by live cells, right? And we know that if there is a connective tissue, it should allow the passage of substances through it. That's what happens in the human body. So although these cells are dead, because they are surrounded by live cells and they want to help in transporting substances between those cells, they have these pits. So you can see the actual picture of what I'm trying to show you. So these cells are predominantly in the rigid areas of the plant body like leaf vein, stem, bark, etc. Therefore, they can be called as the skeleton of the plant system that contributes to the rigidity, uh, which helps the plant to withstand ecological stresses. Um, it also helps to protect the uh, softer parts of the plants against bending, stretching, etc. There are two functions for the skeleton in the body, which is mechanical and conductive. This is with respect to plant that I'm talking about. Um, there are two types of cells which can give mechanical support. One is your sclerates and the other is fibers. Um, conductive cells are found in the vascular system, which is the topic for another video. So these are sclerates, which are more rounded cells. Slirates are primarily found in the fruit wall, epidermal scales, petioles of water plants, etc. They are often found in angiosperms and mostly in dicots rather than in monocots. Again, here, depending upon their appearance and function, there are different types. We have Brady slirates, which are primarily found in fruit pulp of fruits like guava, uh, pear, and chiku. Chiku is also called as sapota fruit in some parts of our country. Um, when you eat these fruits, you realize that their flesh is not as smooth, like mango has a smooth flesh, right? But they have a grainy texture in them, these specific fruits. That grainy texture is because of Brady slirites, and rightfully, they are called as stone cells. Then we have macroslirates, which are found in the outer coating of legumes. So that's why the legume seed coat is really tough. We have these specialized astroslirates that are star-shaped. These are found in the uh, floating leaves of, of water plants like water lily. So they provide the structural support to the leaves and it helps them to withstand the water currents. And finally, we have osteoslirates, which are bone cells. They are also found in the seed coat of legumes. Uh, seeds, etc. Unlike slirates, fibers are long spindle-shaped cells which have tapering or blunt ends. These cells are usually arranged in groups. There are two types of fibers that are found. They can either be xylary fibers or they could be extra xylary fibers. So xylary fibers, they act as um, companions to the elements that are present within xylem and phloem tissues. Uh, they are also called as fibers lyrenchyma. Extra xylary fibers are found outside the vascular tissues and these are usually seen in the leaves of some monocots which are of commercial importance. So uh, plants like flax, hemp, so the fibers which are uh, obtained from these plants have extra xylary fibers in them.